Boom. We're under attack. It's an enemy mortar. Boom. It's getting closer. Get away, get away. As each mortar hits closer and closer, I can start to feel the earth shake underneath my feet. Just a moment ago, I was helping women and children evacuate a village. And now this. Family can be your anchor, your support. But on the other hand, it can also be where the troubles that dominate your mind originate from. I grew up with childhood abuse from my father and was at the moment having marital problems as well. For personal reasons I won't delve into, I made the decision to become a soldier. Literally hanging by a thread, I attempted to end myself after I graduated from air assault school, the hardest school in the army. After the failed attempt, I did not seek help. I should have. Instead, I festered in my depression and started cutting my wrists before deployment to Afghanistan. The pain not only helped to distract me from my current predicaments, but also the hardships to come. Being deployed in this state definitely added to all the negative thoughts and emotions already controlling me. But it was perhaps the events that ensued that helped push me to the point of no return. On this mission in one of the deadliest places in Afghanistan, a truck gunner and a member of the Afghanistan National Army, ANA, was shot in his back right in front of me. I remember the medic running over to him saying, We need fluid! We need fluid! I started to help the medic with whatever he needed. As I was looking at this man's unconscious body, my ears ringing, barely able to hear myself think, Why is this war happening? Why can't we just love one another? Why must there be all this fighting? As the medic was trying to save him, I started crying for this man and began to pray. When the medic stabbed the man with an adrenaline shot and he jumped up screaming at the top of his lungs in Arabic, even though I didn't know what he was saying, his body language and his ungodly screaming said more than enough. The man was screaming to the point of spitting up blood. Finally, a few seconds later, I heard the medic helicopter. So I helped the medic and his guys put the man on the stretcher and they flew away. Later, just when I thought things would calm down, boom. We were under attack by an enemy mortar. Boom, boom. As each mortar hits closer and closer, I can start to feel the earth shake underneath my feet. It felt like God had forsaken us then and there. Everything happened so quickly and unpredictably. I found out the next day that the truck gunner I helped send away on the helicopter had died. After that mission and the other countless horrors I had faced, I started to have nightmares for weeks of the screams. The screams from the ANA soldier that died in front of me. The screams of the women and children trying to get to safety. Endless screaming. It was at this point that I had to seek help, so I started seeing a counselor. However, every night, I just felt like taking my N4 and ending it. I can safely say now that I feel like I'm getting better. I'm finding the strength to keep moving forward and to be strong in times of fear. I will be coming home in a month and I will continue to seek help and counseling. Although some troubles were from my family, through this entire process, I've been keeping in touch and everything has been feeling a lot better with their words and support. I can't wait to return home and be in the embrace of my loved ones. Even though I am a soldier, I don't want your thanks for your service because I don't feel like a hero. The things that I see, the things that I've done, are not things that I want to be thanked for. Instead, you should take this story as a lesson of how short life is. In an instant, everything can change. There's just no time to be angry, sad, or depressed. There's no time to feud over the past or linger on resentment. Be thankful for your life, your family, and keep moving forward no matter how hard it gets. Just enjoy your life.